Bernard Herrmann, just such a well-known composer. I know his music mainly from some of my favorite uh, Hitchcock films. Uh, which are like uh, The Man Who Knew Too Much, North by Northwest, and so it's incredible. I'm not too much into like the horror films, like the Psycho and stuff, but there's no doubt that Mr. Herman had such an impact in uh, film music. This was actually one of the first libraries, I think a few years ago, when I first heard about Spitfire, that I thought I would love to take a look at. And Spitfire, again, such support from them, uh, for allowing me to uh, feature these and they they provide me the uh, libraries and they just let me go with go for it and this is the thing now this is a dry library it's going to sound different than the what we're used to hearing in air studios so air has that big uh, that big roomy sound that ambience and and so now we're going to go to a different um, different place with this so let's uh, I'm just going to just go through these and this is a contact player library so you don't have to worry about having the full version of contact we've got uh, all of these different presets we've got studio orchestra which is these are ensembles high strings flutes trombones and then we have different techniques there's a lot in here to cover I'm just gonna go ahead and load up the studio orchestra first we're just gonna kind of run down some things <laughs> long notes and we've got uh, shorts Yes, Fred Friedrich. Yeah, you've got to listen to the the official demos. Really put things in uh, into in context. Uh, now these are chords. Yeah, and and they've got this dynamic. We've got major keys, minor. Dissonance. That's really cool. And then some effects. Yes, they give you several different uh, chord. These are great because they're actually performed, and, and so it just is so cool. Yeah, so you got downs and, and you got ups. Yeah, it's just those little spices that. Uh... Oh, listen to this. Yeah. Wow. So these are some clusters. And then they snap at the end.
That's wild. And then we've got uh, chatters. That's wild. <laughs> Woo! Okay, so here, let's do uh, let's do some more. So we got high strings. Yeah, it's 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 just so dry and in your face, and that's 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 one of the things about this is that they they have done a lot of work premeditating, so to speak, the the groupings and the way that things are mic. So this is the high strings. Dynamics. shorts hit okay yes some yeah that's that's interesting so the articulations are they vary in volume <laughs> See, listen. Yeah, you hear, you hear like a little bump and the. Yeah, when they release, it's the, the release. But you don't hear that almost cavernous decay uh, with these because they recorded it in, in in that drier studio too. Here's the trill. And you hear, you know, you hear all of this stuff going on in the background. You hear the players in the background. The studio noise. It's very dry, George. Okay. Okay, so let's do this. Let's keep going. Okay, we don't need snapshot. We don't need uh, quick load. We'll go here. So let's do low strings and horns. Good night, Les. Yeah, the dynamics. Sordino. Mixed with strings, the low strings and horns. Very nice. Shorts. So they're muted. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pits. 
Yes, so with the shorts and the pizzicato, they get, they have muted. And, dynam and dynamics are controlled by velocity on the shorts. And with the colleg note, the mutes are a little bit different. Yeah, it's like you can fall way, way down in the rabbit hole with this. Low strings and trombones. So that was low strings and French horn. And now we've got low strings and trombones here. Oh, legato. So we got... into a lot is that uh, the range the range the range like for this stops like, like it's right here that's one of the things that kind of flummoxed me a couple of times is like I wanted to play kind of outside of the range that they gave us but that also helps to restrict you to to use some creativity in how you're playing this. Um, so that's the long and trombones, a piccolo and flutes. We'll just kind of go down this. Um, and he, yeah, yeah, Mike, he also used synthesizers too. I think that was pretty groundbreaking uh, for that time. Um, I think it just, he just kind of pushed, you know, composing forward a little bit. Yeah, Justin, that's right. Yeah, so they just limited the range. They just found the um, the sweet spot. And it, yeah, so it's almost like the film scoring selections uh, with Abbey Road One. It's just they've 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 just kind of kind of what they call curated. Um, I like that legato. Very cool. And we've got the uh, the longs. Very cool. Okay, so the concert flutes, it's a 12, 12 ensemble. Yeah, this is all about discovery uh, for me. Discovering. Now let's push the mics out a little bit. So right now we just have the tree and you see all of these other mic positions that are available. Um, so let's push these, um, let's just push these out some more. It just makes them sound a little farther away. Legato is nice and uh, flutter. The combination of these flutes are very, it makes it sound so nice and rich. 
Yeah, I agree, Mike. Yeah, those little those little things, those release things at the end. It's just it's just got some organic life to it. Uh, very cool. Yeah. Rips. Some mordants. So you got major and major, M major and minor. <laughs> wow. So there's so much here. Let's go to the low wind. So this is the bassoons. Oh, now that's, yeah. And if you're on headphones, you hear how that sound just kind of And they call uh, this, um, the way they recorded it, kind of boisterous and... Uh... Really cool. Very fun. Okay, so oboes, bassoons, and horns. So they group these ensembles together specifically for this style. Very interesting. Yeah, and when they record these in the sections like that, it captures just an organic um, thing. Yes, and so we do have some stereo mixes here. Yeah, so this is, yeah, so you can you can use these stereo mixes and lighter mixes, and they're even, um, they're even some other presets that are light, that are resource light. So it, if you've got a huge template or if you've got memory restrictions and that kind of thing, this is great. They give you um, economic light and then time stretch different uh, patches that kind of help you uh, manage that because when you have multiple layers and instruments in there, uh, you can really chew up a lot of, um, a lot of memory. Let's do trumpets. And we're just going to hit the like the major things, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of the sound. Like uh, like someone mentioned earlier, you really go in and listen to some of those demos. So this is a trumpet and xylophone combined together. And this is if if I had. If I had one, if I had one gripe, you know, it was like, there are no, uh, there's just not a standalone trumpet patch. There's not a standalone trumpet ensemble. Uh, this is the only trumpet that you get. It sounds, it seems like, I mean, cause I've been looking for trumpets and this is like the only thing that you get and you cannot separate the xylophone from the, uh, from the trumpet. So that's the only that's the only disappointing thing I think so far as as like the other thing is is for me to to wrap my head around the the ranges and curation types of things. Now these are the horns.
just blaze those things up. And we've got uh, some common chords here. Yeah. Wow. Very nice. Mm, wow. Very cool. Okay, mid brass. We've got trumpets here. And the trumpet is blast is blasting it. I just wish they had that, yeah. Yeah, so the shorts, the shorts tend to be lower in volume. Wow, that's fun. Okay, so let's keep going here. Dun, da, da, dun. I love the brass. I wish they would have just given us the trump trumpets kind of where we could blend it in uh, in, a, in a different way. Okay, trombones and timpani. See, they've given us trombones and... Um... Oh, wow. Dennis, good to see you. It is just a really huge package. I keep wanting to go back to the uh, snapshot menu. Um, so this is Harp and Celeste. It's just, it is a toolkit. It is absolutely a toolkit. Uh, So you got the Celeste up in these higher octaves. Wow. Yeah, it just kind of pulls you, uh, pulls you away. Yes. The dry sound is really the hallmark of this. Uh, the the way that they were able to capture that, um, and then here's the um, Andes Martinot, uh, which is a really interesting instrument. And um, I've I've been saying I think I think if I had a nickel for every time I said interesting, this is like an early synth.
it's kind of an organy sound but uh <laughs> yes 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 yeah justin yeah so yeah i can own interesting and you can have paul uh be excited <laughs> that's cool okay That's a lot of fun. That's a lot of fun. Oh, that sounds like a video game. Yeah. Okay, and then, then the birds effects. Let's see. That is crazy. Okay, so let's let's do this. <laughs> let's see what we can do. Um, and then you've got a whole bank full of percussions and stereo mixes. Um, you've got individual. You've got the individual articulations broken down. Uh, so so that way, that way you can you can load an instance of contact or load an instrument in contact and only have one inst one articulation for that. Um, and I think that is really cool how they were able to do that. So, um, so we've got individual look and we've got the legato techniques separated. Um, and then we've got the synths, uh, we've got a whole, whole folder full of synths. Let's go to a galactic pad. original Mercury. It was a blustery day on Planet X. We were due to a, do a series of experiments on some soil samples. Don't look at it! <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. It's just crazy. Uh, so, uh, space, base, sustains. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole section in here. Um. Yeah, so you can take that with the... Yeah, so they're taking these orchestral sounds and processing them through the original Mercury synth and um, Squelchy Moog. It's just crazy. Weird noises. Weird noises, like we don't have enough things going on. <laughs> That's 
Yeah, it's unexpected. The unexpected. Ooh, ooh, I'm going to blow up the Earth with my P-46 space modulator. Ooh, ooh, you've made me very angry. <laughs> very angry indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Duck Dodgers in the 23 and a half century. Pfeffer and Thuckatash. <laughs> Yeah, wobbles in space. Okay, so we've got to do this. We've got to do this. What live stream is complete without um, diving into Unify? <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, and the thing is, it, it's that dated, uh, it's that dated sci-fi sound. If we use it today, it brings a freshness. There's a freshness about it. That's why a lot of these scores for television and movies, they're using a lot of these um, more, uh, you know, the vintage techniques. Uh, it brings such um, a newness uh, to uh, to things. We've got to we've got to check out Unify here. And this is what I've this is what I've done. Look at this. I've got um, I've got nine I've got nine instances of contact here. And the first um, the first one I've got uh, the low strings, low strings, high strings, horns, and mid brass trombones, flutes and clarinets, oboes studio orchestra and timpani so i pretty much have just this huge bernard herman ensemble here have the low and high strings together just kind of solo those that's what I love about unify too is because you can um, take the low strings and the high strings and bring them together uh, bring these ensembles together in in new ways that uh, aren't possible uh, with you know it's just like that's why that's why I really enjoy using this and then with velocity switching I think I have like um, my velocity set up where the the horns come in at like uh, 28 and the mid brass comes in at 50 
know where this is going to go.